And that's what I wonder. I mean, I think that so many of the public school setting, it, the bureaucracy gets in the way of these intimate communities. But I exactly. wonder if like these, if the classes were half the size, if it would feel different or if they had 12 students, you know, with an assistant, mm -hmm. would they be able to overcome, you know, some of those, some of the, the things? Um, right. Well, the research on class size says basically no. Uh, <laughs> class mm -hmm. size is less of a factor than people's sure. intuitions would like to think. Um, yeah. and, and I think that that is also highly dependent on on bureaucracy is yeah. that if you were to take the class size down, but then also ensure that that class is embedded in a an administrative structure that's not going to make arbitrary impositions and requirements, mm. it's going to change how it operates. So even even a larger class is going to be more functional in a human interaction, human relationship sense, if it's not having to respond to arbitrary demands from outside itself. If it's huh. if it's you know if if for instance a teacher is trusted as a real professional who has you know professional judgment and professional you know skills that need to be honored, mm -hmm. like a doctor's professionalism and skills are honored, then then when they make then then they're free to make those decisions, then right. they will operate in a in a more productive way. So I think that that there's a mm -hmm. reason why class size doesn't matter and that is because it's not the class size per se that's the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is how is that group of people relating to each other and are they having being forced to respond to things outside of their group that right. are irre that are arbitrary. Now of course there's always going to be things outside the group that are non-arbitrary like you do have to be safe, you do have to be respectful, you know. <laughs> like right. some of those things right. are, you know, yeah, that that's societal yeah. expectations are real and important. Right. But right. arbitrary requirements like arbitrary testing or arbitrary right. academic right. standards right. or something like that. Now, mm -hmm. if they're consensus, if the, the group chose those standards to be relevant, then mm -hmm. that's fine. So I'm not right. saying standards are bad, but I'm saying that arbitrary standards are bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, that, that's where I, you know, I really find that, that uh, an environment like yours, what you've done is, and you know, the history is a group, a community coming together to mm. educate children and doing it in a way, I mean, as a parent run operation, it's like you can't get a flatter power structure if the kids are interacting with the people making the decisions, mm. that's as democratic as it can be. Uh, even mm -hmm. if those, you know, parents might, you know, want to do things differently, but but you've set it up as a, you know, consensus mm -hmm. and consent and, and now a director, but a director whose powers are limited. And, you know, the, our, even the director doesn't get to make arbitrary demands, you know, right. um, but you're, it right. sounds like your community has really protected that those relational supports and mm -hmm. and particularly you know yes we're going to appoint a director but that sounds more like maybe an administrative director not a curriculum director or a or you yeah. know like not not a you know boss of the building you know mm -hmm. boss of the the mm -hmm. staff but more of a like we, we need to manage the enrollment and the payroll and the you know mm -hmm. those tasks This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>